Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to install OpenVPN in your Android server. So OpenVPN is a VPN tunneling solution which can be used to access servers and other devices from a remote location very easily. So let's get into it. So first step is to uh, go to your community apps tab and search for OpenVPN. So there are some uh, options here. So the one we are going to select is uh, one which is provided to us by Linux server. So OpenVPN AS which is OpenVPN access server. So I'm just going to click on the install icon. And in this page uh, there isn't much to change. But as my personal preference I'm going to change the name to OpenVPN and the location. So this is the default location. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm just going to change the folder name. Okay, so normally you don't need to change these things. Uh, so for my personal reasons, I just changed them. And here you can see 943. This is the web port for uh, OpenVPN AS. So no need to change this one also. So these are the two ports which are used to access the VPN server. And normally we don't need this one we only need the 1194 port so we are just going to leave it as it is and after changing these things if you want to that's all and click apply so as you can see uh, the installation is done let's uh, press done and let's go back to the docker step so even though the survey started it might take a couple of minutes to completely start uh, for us to verify whether it is currently starting or finished starting so if you see the log it's currently being executed so we have to wait for a couple of minutes So as you can see, uh, the installation is done. Uh, in your case, it might uh, take a less time if you have an SSD for installation. Uh, in my case, I have a hard drive as my uh, app data storage location. So that's why it took a few minutes. Uh, if not, it should be faster. After closing this, now click on the icon and click on web UI and you will get this message so it's normal because we don't have a certificate installed in this uh, uh, open VPN server for us it doesn't matter just click advance and click proceed anyway so now you get the open VPN access server admin login page so the default login username and password is uh, username is admin and the password is password so you are greeted with some agreements so let's agree to them Okay, now we are inside the OpenVPN access server web interface. Now normally if you are using the free version of this, you will only get two VPN connections allowed. If you have the uh, purchased activation key, you can add the key here and uh, expand those uh, limitations. Uh, for in my case, I don't need uh, more than two, so I'm just going to use the free version. So for, us, for our configuration, let's go to the configuration tab. Um, before that let's see our status so as you see here you can see the access server version uh, server name and current vpn connections allowed uh, currently active and uh, other things as well so first of all we need to change the server name so to change that we need to go to configuration and we need to go to network settings so here you can see uh, hostname or IP address so normally if you have a public static IP address you can give the static IP address here but but most of us uh, doesn't have a public static, a static IP so you will have to per purchase a public static IP address so normally if you don't have one we all of us are having a dynamic IP address so the problem in dynamic IP address is it changes uh, randomly so for that there's a solution that is a uh, dynamic DNS or DDNS uh, you can uh, use a DDNS service uh, like noip.com uh, for uh, 
given a domain name whenever the uh, IP address changes. So for more information on how to configure DDNS in your home network, I will have a video linked in the dis description or on the top right corner. You can uh, go and see that. Uh, so currently I have configured mine. So I'm just going to give the name that I have given for my DDNS account. So which is titan hyphen unread dot ddns dot net okay uh, here we don't need to change much uh, here we need to select udp and whenever you select udp the port number will be changed so uh, as you can see when it is in the multi daemon mode uh, both port numbers are shown here but we only need the 1194 uh, port so we are just going to select udp and change the port number to 1194 afterwards nothing else here mm, yes that's all so let's save the settings okay so the update running server so it will disconnect so just close the page go and open the web UI again login into your page again now the domain name is changed and if we go back to those place the UDP and the port number is also there. So now what we need to do is we need to configure the VPN settings. So here what we need to do is we need to add a routing uh, line uh, which is in the range of our server. So my current server is running in the IP address called 192.160.252. So the IP route uh, should be 192.168.0.0 0, 0 and the subnet of uh, a class C IP address is normally 255.255.255.0 so because of that the subnet value should be 24 so if it is something like 192.168.1.252 then still the subnet value is same but the value here will be changed to 1.0 so that is what will happen in my case it should be 0, 0.0 because my IP address is 192.168.0.252 so after doing that setting here under VPN settings, nothing else to change here. You can just click save settings, update the running server. Okay. Now that's all from here. So now what we need to do is we need to go to user management and user permissions. So normally the admin user is the only user available inside the server. So I'm going to create a new one called KP and I will give him admin rights and you have an option called allow auto login option so you can give this uh, which will uh, use a service uh, where you don't need to enter the password every time you try to access the open VPN server uh, in my case I'm just going to leave it uh, unchecked uh, because I don't need it uh, uh, or else uh, for your need uh, needs you can just uh, check that and go uh, in my case i'll just select it also okay let's check that one also so click save update running server that's all so as you can see here the user is created so if you need to give a password for that user you can just uh, click the more settings icon and set a password as well so let's set a password save settings update running server so just like that you can create the user and apply it so now what we need to do is we need to uh, port forward the services so if you need to access this uh, from a remote network you need to uh, port forward it if not it will not work so to port forward we need to log into your router so i am inside my router already and go to virtual servers and under under that there should be option called port forwarding if not in some routers it might be in a, in a different name but the same thing should be done so under this one we need to enter our routers or sorry our server's ip address which is 192.168.0.252 and for the port number 1194 1194 1194.1194 and the protocol is UDP. In your case, you will not have multiple interfaces. I think in normal routers, there should be only one WAN interface. In my case, I have two WAN interfaces. So my current router, which is working is WAN2. I'm just going to select WAN2 and press OK. So as you can see, the uh, value is applied. 
and the forwarding is done also we need to port forward our um, web interfaces port as well so which is uh, 943 I'm just going to enter that one here uh, by doing so it will be make the uh, user much more easier to access the uh, connect file so okay now let's uh, log out from the router so before uh, trying to access the uh, server from a remote network we need to make sure whether the server is working properly uh, in the local network and the user can uh, connect to the uh, profile using the username and password so to make sure that works we need to go to the user interface to go to the user interface you need to erase this admin part and click enter and if you log out you will get this uh, user login page and here you can type the user that you just created and the password for that user and as you see here you can connect and access this so these are the two files which you can use to connect uh, so if you previously download and send this file manually to the user then that's an uh, that's option if not you can uh, forward the web interface as well so in my case i forwarded it uh, to make it much more easier for the user so let's check whether it is working to check this uh, open vpn solution we need to access it from a remote network to simulate that i'm going to convert this same pc which is currently in my local network um, and connect uh, disconnect it from my local and connect it to my mobile hotspot so by doing so uh, this will be working as a remote pc and the server will be uh, simulated as the pc which is on a, another location so let's close this one and let's minimize i'm just going to disable this network card and when i open uh, you should be able to see my uh, wi-fi hotspot so now the hotspot is connected and now if we try to access my server using the local ip address i am not able to access it so you, as you can see i have converted my pc to a different uh, location and let's uh, make sure that is working so first of all we need to download uh, the configuration file and the open vpn connect application so first we'll uh, go to open vpn website so let's type connect and there are some versions so the best version is the open vpn client connect software version 3 so let's download that one so which is this one uh, click download and you should uh, get a uh, uh, software and install it on your pc so in my case i have already done that one as you can see here open vpn connect is already installed but when i open this one i am not able to connect because i don't have the file yet so to get the file as we did before i port forwarded my uh, web interface as well so i'm just going to type my domain name which is titan hyphen unread dot ddns dot net colon 943 and in front of it it should be mentioned as https colon forward slash so as you see here it's working and it's connecting so the user login is there let's type our username here And we are connected now here we have the two options i'm just going to download this one so the file is there so as you see here uh, as the application is uh, installed already in this pc uh, the logo is shown as the open vpn file so if i click on it just by def automatically it should be added into the open vpn connect application so they're asking us whether to import the file or not so i need to import this i'm just going to click ok so it's imported so here we need to give the password or is it it, uh, it won't connect so the password of the user i'm just going to enter it here and add so it's added now let's make sure it's connecting or not so as you see here it's connected now to make sure it's uh, able to access our local network uh, which previously was 192.168.252 
now we are able to access our Android server remotely. Now, as well as that, if I type uh, my same IP address on the run as a network path, I should be able to access the share folders as well. So the shares are also being accessed. So just like that, uh, you are able to access your uh, remote network or your home server uh, from a remote network very easily. So I hope this video was very informative and it's a very uh, good solution. Now, there is another video which I have created, uh, which is using a Raspberry Pi to create an open VPN access server. So make sure to check that also. I will have the link in the description as well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was very good and have a nice day. Subscribe my channel and give a like. Thank you.